Gordon, where do you see these assaults that you describe right now? You say you, do, you describe them as, as unrelenting. China does so many, uh, engaged in so much destructive con conduct, it's really hard to, to pick. But just, just to go through this, for instance, so you have Chinese troops deep into Indian controlled territory in Ladakh. You have Chinese encroachments in India's Sikkim. You have Chinese encroachments in Nepali territory. You have the daily flights through Taiwan's air defense identification zone and those very hostile naval maneuvers circumnavigating the island. You have uh, the Chinese mar uh, maritime uh, militia um, in Japanese territorial waters around the Senkaku Islands, which the Chinese claim is the Dalyus, in the East China Sea. Um, it's just throughout the region, you've got China um, trying to take Whitsun Reef from the Philippines. Um, and of course, there are the dangerous intercepts of the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force and the global commons. Um, so, um, you know, the list goes on and on. But then, of course, you have China um, stealing hundreds of billions of dollars of U.S. intellectual property every year. Um, John Ratcliffe, when he was director of national intelligence in December last year, talked about about $500 billion worth of US IP. Some people put the amount a little bit more, some a little bit less, but it's a grievous wound. And, and this hasn't slowed or stopped? It's increased. Matter of fact, well, we had uh, you know, President Obama and Xi Jinping in the Rose Garden, um, September 2015, I think. And um, Xi Jinping um, agreed, apparently, with uh, the United States not to hack U.S. companies for commercial purposes. Well, they've continued to do that. So, um, you know, the complete violation of that obligation. And, and also the other one, the other promise that was announced at that time was that uh, China wouldn't militarize its features in the South China Sea, which, of course, it has done since then as well. So uh, Beijing is... Just we don't hold Beijing accountable. We come to all these agreements, understandings, declarations, and Beijing violates them, and we don't do anything. This is really dangerous, Jan, because we have taught the Chinese to ignore our warnings. I mean, this is what the British and French did in the 1930s with regard to the Third Reich. They issued all sorts of, of warnings and, and never um, enforced them. And so when it came to September 1939, you know, when Hitler was threatening to invade Poland and Britain and France said, if you do that, we'll go to war. We know from the German archives that nobody in Berlin thought that the British and French would actually go to war. So what happens? Germany invades and London and Paris declare war. But Germany was surprised by that. Well, take that whole scenario. Um, it's the same thing right now. But it's only over a longer period of time we have taught the Chinese, oh, um, ignore everything we say because we're not really serious. So at some point, the Chinese will push us too far. We will have to issue warnings. The Chinese won't believe us, and there will be tragedy. And I just hope that at some point, we do impose those costs short of a wartime situation. But that's where we're heading if we don't stop this. So we do know that uh, the Chinese Communist Party is waging this unrestricted type of warfare war on the U.S. and other, uh, let's say, the free world. Um, but now we're talking, you're talking about actual kinetic war. Do you think that the China is looking to do this in the near future? I've been reading a number of analysts who I respect who seem to think that's coming. I don't think China wants it for a number of reasons, um, but I think that China's taking actions that make it probable. Um, so for instance, we talked about these intercepts of the Navy and our Navy and our Air Force. Um, one of those could go wrong. Um, we were very fortunate on April 1st, 2001. There was a very capable naval aviator who was piloting the, our EP-3 over the South China Sea. And despite the fact that a Chinese fighter um, clipped um, our, the wing uh, or the airline, um, he was able to rescue that plane and land it without loss of American life. But that was only by the grace of God. Um, should that happen again, um, we may not be so fortunate. We know in the spring of 2018, China lasered a US C-130 uh, over Djibouti um, and actually blinded not just the pilot but the co-pilot. So that could have been a disaster as well. This is, these are the types of events that could lead to something. 
Also, we have China taking very provocative actions around its periphery, as we talked about. On the night of June 15, 2020, in a surprise attack, Ch China killed 20 Indian soldiers. Um, there's, there's already been loss of life. And um, law of averages says that one of these goes very wrong. Well, in talking about India, you know, it was the most bizarre thing to see Chinese state media basically making, it's apparently making fun of the death toll from COVID in India, you know, by juxtaposing these, uh, you know, this is fire yeah, in this China. Is yeah, unbelievable. But what, what's the idea behind doing this? That's a posting, um, and it was said uh, fire in China, which showed the Long March 5B um, lifting off from its pad. Um, and it then showed fire in India, which were um, a bare field where um, bodies were being cremated. This made no sense. Um, it, it, it's in China's interest to try to woo India. But this post undid a lot of goodwill that China had generated in the immediate days beforehand. Remember, this was just right after Ned Price, State Department spokesman, um, said those words that, um, you know, when we're denying active pharmaceutical ingredients for India, really caused a lot of problems for the US and India. And um, what India, what China did was sort of erase that memory with this really um, inflammatory posting. So this made no sense for Chinese foreign policy, but it shows the inherent hostility in Chinese officials for India and indeed for the rest of the world, because that came just a day or so after that post from the uh, Chinese embassy in Tokyo that showed death, which was sort of wrapped in an American flag with the Star of David. Um, I mean, again, it was disgusting, but it shows you what they think about others. So you've just watched a clip from an American Thought Leader's interview, and as you probably know, I pour my heart and soul into these. YouTube has been censoring some entirely mainstream videos lately, including things like Florida Governor DeSantis's coronavirus roundtable. We've even had some of our own videos removed from YouTube for no clear reason whatsoever. And frankly, I don't find this to be appropriate. I don't find this to be acceptable. I don't want to be sitting around thinking what YouTube may or may not feel like they want to censor. And beyond that even, YouTube has demonetized us for the past two months. Ostensibly, we're working to resolve the issue, but our hopes are kind of fading when it comes to this. So what is our response to this? Well, we've started our own platform, Epoch TV. Now, Epoch TV is the premium Epoch Times video platform. It's got American thought leaders, but it also has The Larry Elder Show and Crossroads with Joshua Phillip and a number of other programs. So you can get Epoch TV for this low introductory rate of $4.99 a month. And in so doing, you're actually supporting the Epoch Times as an organization. You're supporting uncensored news. You're supporting groundbreaking investigative reporting. And you're supporting these deep dive interviews that I love doing so much. Please join us.